Namaste. How's it going? Everyone has the potential of lifting the subtle force from the lower centers of the body to the brain. And yoga is just one of the many disciplines we could practice to attain that purpose. All right. So I'm not this with the other disciplines. I can just talk you through the process within the Hatha yoga perspective. And even yoga, there are a few branches, if not many branches, yeah, attached to the word yoga. And there are like four, you know, four main ones. Um, we have the, of course, the Raha Yoga, we have the Bhakti, the Karma, and the Yana Yoga. Yeah. Uh, Hatha Yoga is under the umbrella of the Raha, or the, well, you might call this the meditative aspect of the practice. And Hatha Yoga is just one of the many, well, uh, branches of the Raha Yoga. Yeah. And then Hatha Yoga, well, for me, is the most accessible yeah, for most practitioners. The reason being, well, in Hatha Yoga, we utilize the body yeah, to gain access to the subtle realms. Yeah. Because the body being the, the most tangible, I'd say, and the hardest yeah, to crack through yeah, when the body is open, yeah, the subtle forces happen within. Because at the end of the day, yeah, the energy is flowing through this temple, yeah, the physical structure, which yeah, in the latter part of the practice will disintegrate too. Yeah, but the consciousness, which is dwelling in, within, within us, the energy, the soul, the spirit, which is within us in the first place, yeah, remains well present. It doesn't disintegrate. It remains alive. It's re it remains compact and whole. Well, okay. Now, in the realms of Hatha Yoga, you know, the energy forces we try to unify are like you know, divided into two. They are categorized into two major ones. Although there are many energetic forces, yeah, we call them bias, and we call them well, yeah, there are there yeah, are a few of them, yeah, specifically five major ones, but of of this. Energetic forces in Hatha Yoga we unify at the end of it to opposing, seemingly opposing forces, but yeah, in reality they are just one. They're manifesting as another. Yeah. The Apanavayu, yeah, the energy we ourselves produce in the practice of yeah, the conscious observances of Asana and Pranayama, yeah, and the prana. Yeah, the prana being ever present is all around us. It's the grace of God, yeah, so to speak. And in these two forces, yeah, it's just a manifestation of one another. The prana being, I say, non-reactive, passive, but it's present. Yeah? And the apana, which is active and dynamic, you know, which is within us. All right. So once these two forces happen, yeah, they will result in like energetic explosion inside, yes. So the, the blending of the forces inside through the techniques of mudra and bandhas, yeah. those unified forces become one, and we call that force the kundalini energy. And the kundalini energy has many terms, depending on, yes, again, the discipline we practice. Yeah, it's referred to as the soul, the Holy Spirit, yeah, the Kunda, yeah, the well, the primal force where you know we come from, yeah, so to speak. All right, now in the realms of Hatha Yoga, the practice of Hatha Yoga, um, mudras or energy channeling techniques are practiced for us to unite these two forces together. All right, so it's a very complex, yeah, I say topic, yeah, concept, but I'll try to explain them to you in real life perspective, how I feel them, how I do them, and how I access yeah, the subtle force. But of course, this doesn't happen overnight. Yeah. Well, many years of the practice of the techniques yeah, will eventually lead to the subtle manifestation. Okay, now. 
Asana or the postures, uh, we aim to open the body. As I've mentioned, this is the, well, the gross or the tamas uh, of the three major gunas. It's the most difficult you know, to open, to purify. And asana yeah, will take care of that. Yeah, open and then free the physical body of heaviness or inertia. Now, pranayama is the yoga of the breath where we start to regulate the flow of the breath because through the, the pranayama, yeah, we can gain access to the deep pockets, deep points in the body where asana yeah, can't yeah, purify or cleanse or touch. And only pranayama will be able to attain that purpose of deep cleansing. Okay. Now, as we practice the asana and the pranayama, of course, yeah, through time and practice, yeah, we will be developing skills of gaining access to those inner pockets, inner realms, you know, where in the first place, when we start the journey, well, they're barely felt. If not, we, we don't feel them at all. And these internal pockets, compartments, yeah, we gain access to the, the, the inner dynamics of our energetic anatomy. Like we're learning another skill of being aware of our body, but internally. From the outside, we're now gaining access inside. And these points yeah, are regulators of energy. Hollow points there. Yeah, hollow but very sensitive. And we call them bandhas. Yeah, bandhas are like you know, regulators of energy. It's like the tap. It's either we open and loosen the tap so we can allow more energy to flow through that point or constrict or tighten the energy so we can, well, seal that force depending on the techniques at hand, depending on the method or the drill or the, the practice yeah, needed for that particular purpose. All right, for example, if we're doing breathing exercise, yeah, for example, you're sitting in the sakasana, you're sitting in a cross-leg position, yeah, padmasana, whatever your body can allow you to practice. Yeah. In the practice of pranayama, you know, whether you're doing alternate nostril breathing or free-flowing, yeah, so we engage the bandhas within, yeah, so we can draw the energy you know, from the peripheries towards the center. All right. And then speaking of the energy, yeah, as we inspire the breath in, because the inspiring of the breath in is drawing in, yeah, the energy, the pana, the bodily energy, which in the first place we harness down the bottom regions of the physical anatomy, namely the hips, yeah, we draw that energy up. And this vital life force entering the body, yeah, the prana, we allow that energy to descend. Uh, the natural course of this energy are the following. The apana, the physical energy, its natural direction is downwards and outwards. Therefore, the, the, the physical energy has its way of like, well, serving the bottom or the lower regions of our existence. Yeah. Food intake, digestion, elimination, sexual function, yeah, procreation, as well as you're building the stability of the body. Most of them are down the lower regions, from the core down to our bottom peripheries. Yeah. And without practicing the yoga techniques, this energy will just exit the body through those functions of yeah, digestion, elimination, sexual uh, activity, as well as yeah, uh, physical exertion. All right. Now, the prana has its way of going down. Yeah, so inspire the breath in, yeah, the grace of God descends. Prana descends. Yeah, the grace of energy, the grace yeah, descends upon us, so to speak. Yeah. Now, the aim of Hatha Yoga is to reverse. Yeah, don't worry about the prana, because the prana has its way of coming down. Yeah, so it's your gift. It's a gift, yeah? It goes down. Well, the, the challenge is this. How can we now lift you know, our own energy up, which has its way of flowing downwards in the first place? All right. So that's the aim now of the 
bandhas and the mudras. All right. So I've talked about the bandhas. There are regulators and like valve. You can either loosen or tighten the, those seals or those valves or points so you can direct the energy to those specific uh, centers needed for that particular technique. Now, mudras, they're, they're quite different because mudras, their main function is whatever we harness you know, through the engagement of the breathing and the bandhas, you know, we lift. Yeah, the energy up to the higher centers. So the combination of the bandhas and the mudras yeah, does the work of lifting and channelizing the energy from the lower centers of the brain. Therefore, in Hatha Yoga, bandhas and mudras are tackled towards the meditative aspects of the practice. Now, Hatha Yoga starts, of course, with the physical body. Washat karmas, which includes, yeah, you know, uh, before you do your on the mat observances, you have to do your yeah you know, off the mat cleansing. That will happen in the first stages of the practice, maybe a couple of years. Then after that, the asana remains part of your practice, but you are practicing distinctively. Then the pranayama, pranayama is the flow, the control of the breath. Yeah, you know, these two are the bottom or the lower observances we practice. But you know, these two, you know, the um, Aspects that are the most difficult to break through, yeah, to crack through, so to speak. Then we engage and utilize our bandhas in, well, directing the energy to the midline. All right. <laughs> so in a nutshell, that's the process. And the mudras, we direct the energy, we harness, and we unify through the bandhas to the brain. And after that, we meditate. So Hatha Yoga is like, well, yeah, categorized or divided into five, five major stages. Well, that's how I do it. Asana, Pranayama, well, Bandha, Mudra, then meditation or stillness and silence. All right. I've given many tutorials yeah, about the two you know, first stages, asana and pranayama. You can just have a look at my many lessons regarding this. Yeah, and then they will all help you because that's, that's my style. Yeah, the, all the classes I do, you know, all the techniques I do are geared towards the development of the two lower centers, the physical body and the breathing. All right, bandhas. All right, so this is now what gets tricky. Bandhas, there are people who are already sensitive to the flow of energy. Yes, there are. Yeah. Do they need to engage their bandhas or can they happen spontaneously? Yes, they can happen spontaneously without them consciously doing it. Yeah, I truly believe that, well, how brutal it may sound, yeah, everyone's just starting from the last stage they left off, so to speak. So they're just continuing. So we're not born equal in this practice, in this spiritual journey. Some who've finished and accomplished more in the past, they're just continuing to the present. So, but of course, since we're, we are all made of flesh and blood, we have to start to the body. But for them, you know, the practices of the prana or the, the physical observances, which include the breathing exercise, may not be as intense because they are already given that yeah, uh, natural um, sensitivity to the energetic anatomy. But of course, they still have to open the body, but not as intense, not as long, yeah, not as, I say, rigorous as, you know, well, us, yeah, maybe 95% of the population. All right, so yeah, bless those people, they are the gifted ones. I started really very low. Although at, during my yeah, younger years, when I, I was little, I was already sensitive to energetic forces, but I didn't realize it's connected to yoga until now. I'm an earth element, I'm a Taurus, so my body is really attached to the ground, attached to the earth, and I need to open up the body so I can understand my relationship to that, well, initial gift I have when I was young. Now, going back, all right. Again, so some people may not need the bandhas anymore because they can access 
willingly, spontaneously, without them doing it consciously, but it's happening within already. And there are nature, natural tendencies of these um, personalities. You know, we call them the yeah, sa'wa, the sattvic personality. Yeah, they're more subdued. Even their physical structure, yeah, they are distinctive. Yeah, they are made up of mo mostly the subtle forces flowing through them. Well, the the air element, yeah, as well as water element. Yeah, but for us, yeah, for me, I'm made up of like most of it, like water, fire, and I'm really very earthy. Yeah, that's why I can't access my energetic anatomy without observing the lower observances, namely asana and pranayama. Once a hatha yoga practitioner, always a hatha yoga practitioner. Now, bandhas, all right. It could be a conscious practice, yeah, but it could also be a spontaneous practice. Okay. So I want you to distinguish these two different concepts. Conscious practice of the bandhas are done yeah, while you're practicing the energetic techniques. For example, pranayama, yeah, you're sitting upright, with your breathing. All right. You just don't clench and squeeze. There's like this order of their engagement. And the engagement is so subtle, yeah, only those specific tiny points, specific areas in the body are engaged or utilized. Okay, now, in the practice, for example, of your alternate nostril breathing or your free uh, pranayama, if you're practicing, for example, jai, or if you're practicing other techniques where you don't engage the hand in blocking the nostrils, or if you're doing your kachari mudra or your tongue or even your eyes mudra. So the order is, inspire the breath in, and as you inspire the breath in, you feel. You won't miss it. Can you feel the subtle force lift? And it starts if you're so attuned to the process of the breath. It starts at the bottom of the hips. All right, so the hips are like this, like they're, it's made up of like triangular bones. Yeah, the pit of the hips where your generative organs are and your anal, anal genital region yeah, is located. And the sloping side of the sacralumba, the, the sacrum. Sacrum is a sacred place because that's where this energy is hiding. Yeah, the Kundalini energy, the Holy Spirit, yeah, the, the, the force yeah, which we all come from. All right? It's the primal force, it's the Bija energy. All right. So in there, you're going to feel it rise up to the region below the navel. All right, so let me angle this camera so you can see. Okay. Because we will be doing drills later on on how you can practice this at home. There are really quite drills, um, quite a few of them, specific drills you can practice. So you can engage the subtle force. Let me just go a little bit wider so we can go straight to the drills after this. All right. Okay. All right. So you're sitting upright, right? All right. So from the navel, or from below the navel, inspire the breath in. Like this, this organic need to pull the core in, the lower part of the belly, even if the pressure descends to the belly, descends to the core. Yeah, so I want you yeah, to forget about, yeah, like we're bulging the belly as you inspire. Forget about that. Yeah, so don't force the physical body you know, to move because the book says expand the belly, expand the abdomen, yeah, open the body. Yeah, energetic techniques are way, way past and deeper than those written in the books. Yeah, so I want you to, like you're learning again from the scratch. Yeah. As you inspire the breath in, can you feel that? Like, even if the, the breath descends, the inner linings of the belly goes thinner and hugging. 
like you're wearing this tight belt. And then the belt tightens and you're drawing and pulling up. That alone, if it's happening to you already as you practice your techniques, yeah, is a deep indication that your bandhas are already engaging. You are not even doing conscious techniques. Yeah. That's why the beginning of, of, of this lecture, I mentioned everyone is capable of lifting the energy up to the higher centers. Everyone. If we only with utmost mindful awareness of the breathing process. And then this will serve us in many layers and purpose and goals and intention. Because this energy now we are all given, if we direct it to the higher centers of the brain, can replenish yeah, our vital force. Because it doesn't end, it doesn't uh, deplete. Yeah, it remains there. Yeah, it's forever. It's forever present. The body will disintegrate, yes. Yeah? When we pass, this physical body will just decay. But that consciousness, the energy, we all are given as a gift, remains intact. Yeah. And this is the consciousness. Yeah. Well, it's another topic altogether, how, what happens when we pass in relation to yoga. But in a nutshell, yeah, the body will decay, the physical body will decay, yeah, but that awareness remains intact. All right, so going back to the bandha. You feel that rise? Now, at the top of the breath, you will seal that energy to the engagement of the mula bandha. Right. You've, you might probably have heard squeezing the buttocks. Yeah, tighten the inner genital region. Tighten your perineum like you're holding the pee. Yeah, you're holding yeah, the, the edge to urinate. All right. Yes. Yeah, you do that, but you do it in a way that it's subtle. If you try to breathe through it, and it's, it has to be done with the breath. At the top of the breath, just try to pull that, yeah, a mild, a mild clip, I call it clip. Yeah, a mild clip of that, yeah, um, the base of the triangle where your anal genital region is located. At the top of the breath, feel that? Like it involuntarily seals itself without you squeezing it. Yes, I do sometimes. Well, but this is really conscious practice. I try to really grip the inner genital cavity. Now, for example, I do this in this drop. Right. This, I, yeah, this lecture, this uh, the lesson is really very helpful, especially if you are already tackling the meditative part of the practice. Okay, now, for example, yeah, and this I normally do this, yeah, with this technique. All right, you can, yeah, do a strap like that, yeah, whatever you have at home, and then just open one leg out to the side, yeah, and then circle this leg around, yeah. Now, as you circle the leg around. Try, as you inhale, try to yeah, clench. Yeah, you can clench the inner genital region. And at the same time, yeah, circle this leg around. Exhale out, release that clenching. Clench and out. All right, you can even yeah, suck the breath in like you're choking the breath. And exhale. Mm. Exhale. Mm. Yeah. All right. Feel that? Like something is moving inside. Yeah. That particular center. Yeah. For example, it's your right. You are. You're clearing or you're opening your pingala nadi. Yeah. So you can draw that energy to the midline. Mm. 
Yeah, and you won't miss it. Yeah, if you do it on the other side, same thing. Yeah. That's why all my lessons, you know, seemingly I'm doing the lessons randomly, the classes, but they have energetic significance. Exhale out. Inhale. And then try to reach this arm overhead. Inhale. And then light. Yeah, clenching. Got. You can even hold that leg to circle a few times while keeping the seal inside. Good. And you will feel like yeah, the triangular part of the body, the sacrum, goes to the midline. You will feel this sense of openness. Yeah. Openness. Yeah. Well, I do this to, to alleviate you know, lower back discomfort as I prepare for my next technique. But in energy channeling, because you are channelizing the energy towards the midline, therefore, you free your body of whatever stagnation it experiences. Right. In Hatha Yoga, there's one posture which is believed to spontaneously, involuntarily access the Mula Bandha. Yeah. By the way, this process of yeah, you know, lightly stimulating or adjusting, adjusting the inner genital region, the perineum, is what we call the Mula Bandha. It's the Gomukhasana, or the position of the cow face. But of course, not everyone will be able to do this. Right, so one knee is under, the other one on top, yeah, like your knees are stacked. So this knee crossing over the opposite side, while the other one rest over it. Right. Because in the, in the Gomukhasana, but Gomukhasana should be done after opening the sacrolumbar region. You don't just do this for the sake of accessing the Mula Bandha. You have to open the body first. Yeah? And then you might do a few of the side stretches before you do this. All right. In the Mula Bandha, or in the Gomukhasana, yeah, since you are using the mind yeah, for you to close the gap between the right and the left channels, therefore, it's easy to practice. You don't have to clench as intense, as intensely or as strongly as before. Yeah, your binding limbs does it for you. All right. But yeah, again, this is not for everyone. Because this will require many years of preparing the knees, preparing the ankles, and of course, if, for example, you have limitations in those body parts, if you have lower back injury, if you can't uh, hold this sitting position for prolonged periods of time, this may not be for you. But mindful awareness of the breath, you can attain the same purpose. With, of course, accessible yeah, techniques of opening the body. All right, so clenching and squeezing, yes, yeah, they are done, but we do them distinctively, specifically when we breathe. And then when we breathe, we do them specifically to the stage of the breath where we're about to finish the inhalation. And you exhale, relax. Okay, so that's only the bottom, yeah, banda, the mula banda. All right. There are like two other primary bandas. You have the higher one, the next, uh, yeah, after the mula banda, you have the udiana banda around the navel region towards the lower abdominal cavity. Yeah, and the third major one is the jalandara. But we have other bandas. Yeah, our bodies are made up of many of many bandhas. I could feel bandhas in between each of the banda. I could feel the banda in my, the hollow spot of my elbow. Well, this is my theory. Uh, this is just me. In every hollow spot of the body, there's a banda. <laughs> when there are like intersections and there's a hollow spot, that they're like um, black holes. You are made up of many black holes. And then in, in, in those yeah, centers, they are bandas because they draw, you know, they magnetize the energy to that particular part. And in the body, there are like three major ones. I've talked about the other bandas. You may just want to have a look at that lesson so you can ap appreciate the other subtle bandas, but the three major ones. All right.
So that's how you engage the Mula Banda. First, relax. And as you inspire the breath in, draw the breath up. And then lightly clip. Exhale out. All right. And in the process of releasing the Banda, the Mula Banda happens first. Release the, uh, release the Mula Banda first, and then the other Bandas. All right. Well, I'll keep talking about the bandas, but I might edit this video so it doesn't get too too long. Yeah, yes, you can just um, you know well learn, or you can go back to this lesson. Now, next is the Udiana Banda. Yeah, Udiana Banda. Well, I didn't learn Udiana Banda as a separate practice. Yeah, well, there's a, the Udiana Banda. Banda as a technique of sucking the, the, the muscles of the core in, yeah, like the mock, the forceful one. I'm not talking about that. It's another, well, technique altogether. Yeah. But it's a, it's a good technique of gaining sensitivity of the abdomen cavity. Yeah, the, the suction, like this one. Yeah. And the exhale out. And then you do a mock one. I'm not talking about this, yeah? So this is the conscious Udiyana Banda. Let me f uh, focus on the spontaneous or the organic Udiyana Banda, all right? The organic Udiyana Banda is, as inspire the breath in. Yeah. You notice as well that aside from this lifting of the apana up or your pelvic cavity up, yeah, the walls of the tummy, even if, even if the pressure is going down, even if your external abdomen region is expanding, within, yeah, like the, the muscles within or behind, yeah, the superficial one, hug to the midline. And it makes the body so light, like the body weight is lifted off the ground. And therefore, Udiyana Banda is also called as the flying up lock. Because it makes the body so light, feels like you're flying. And then this is easily accessible, for example, in the asana. Udiyana Banda is very helpful in the practice of asana, especially the weight-bearing ones. Hand standing, back bending, arm balancing, forward bending. Yeah, asanas where we prevent the pressure of the technique to yeah, end up in our joints and the sensitive part of our spine, the Udiyana Bandha. And if you're practicing Ujjayi Pranayama, if the Ujjayi Pranayama is already light and organic for you, it means your Udiyana Bandha is already open. You don't have to do anything, conscious effort to do that. Like this energy we harnessed, yeah, our own energy rises through the engagement, the utilization of the mula, and this energy coming down, you feel it like the pressure of the breath from the outside goes down, but internally it feels hugging to the midline. As the energy rises, the prana descends, and you feel them blend around the navel region. And that is the union. Actually, the union happens already at the mula, but you barely feel it. You can feel the union direct or predominantly down the core region. And then this probably is the principle behind the abdominal breathing. Yeah, But it's not a conscious breathing. You are not... You are not adapting to the text. Rather, the text is the, the breath goes down to the belly, but internally, something opposite happens. <laughs> yes, the, the, the breath goes there, but it's not the breath, the gaseous breath, but the awareness, the openness of the body. Again, bandhas are like valves. In the practice of Udina Bandha, we loosen the valve so the force descends, 
we loosen the valve of the Udiyana Bandha so the Apana Vayu can enter the intersection. Yeah, and then the intersection is around the navel, the Manipura Chakra. Therefore, the Manipura Chakra being the center of the body is one of the most important aspects of the energetic anatomy. That's where the, well, the, the union is predominantly felt. And then when the Manipura Chakra is open, well, it's open in the first place is, I say, purified and activated and stimulated, yeah, then it's easy to gain access to the higher centers of the energetic anatomy. That's actually the, 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 the transition yeah, from the body to the spirit, to the higher centers. Now, now there's also a band in between. Yeah, after the Udiyana Bandha is resting around the bony part of the ribs, if you practice the Ujjayi Pranayama, this is also easily felt. And you can feel like, yeah, there's this force creeping up here. Uh, a mild sensitivity of the bony part towards yeah, the sternum, towards the spot, the part of the chest like it lifts the energy from the Uddiyana Bandha up here. Yeah, because the next Bandha after the Uddiyana Bandha, after the, yeah, the Ri Bandha, yeah, is the Jalandhara, the Jalandhara Bandha, or yeah, the, the apex, yeah, Jalandhara means the top. And then the Jalandhara Bandha, the book says, pull the throat in, hollow the throat, yes, it could help you gain the sensitivity of the bandha, but in organic sense, you can even do it open like that. I'm accessing it. You can do it like sideways. You can do it passively. Yeah. You can do it <laughs> when, whenever you are practicing your asana. Yeah. But you are folding the head to the front while lifting the sternum up and then drawing everything to the midline as in the first two stages, it will assist you yeah, constrict yeah, the Chalandara. So if you notice, yeah, the bandhas are like gears. As the mula closes, yeah, of course, at first they are all open, so the valves are open. As we allow the energy to enter and our own energy rises, we tighten the mula. We open the udina, yeah, and we constrict the Jalandhara Bandha because we only send yeah, the essence or the refined energy to the brain. We don't bring the energy in bulk. Otherwise, it will overpower the soma inside. The soma being the CSF. Yeah. Because this energy is brimming with the Agni, the force. Yeah, the, the essence or the dynamic force. And if we overstimulate the brain, it may lead to the overpowering of the cranial cavity. And we only yeah, channelize the subtle force inside the brain. And this force is f filtered by the various bandhas of the energetic anatomy. And this process, the total process of lifting the energy to the brain is what we call mudras. Right. So Hatha Yoga is a complex discipline, but if we understand it from the real life experience, it's actually easy. Yeah. But of course, well, everyone, uh, well, I'm lucky to have the, the proper, the right circumstance, the energy, the nature, because that's me as a person. I'm very introspective. I'm not afraid of trying things. Yeah? I have my share of uh, the challenges and the pitfalls, but yeah, it serves me yeah, because this is my calling. I'm a teacher. But again, going back to my introduction, everyone has the potential of lifting the energy up without you overthinking about all of these things happening. And that's through mindful breathing. Mindful breathing. As you inspire the breath in, the spine being the antenna, open, sit tall, And at the top of the breath, 
you can bring your awareness, the optic awareness up between the eyebrows. Like you're looking inside the brain, looking in front of that black canvas hovering over the horizon. Exhale out and soften the body. Inner body opens. It goes bright like the sun. And at the top, you may stay one or two seconds. Exhale, the outer body relaxes, it softens, yeah. And in Hatha Yoga again, this one technique that accomplishes all. And this technique involves the tongue, the Kachari Mudra. The Kachari Mudra is a technique where, yeah, let me just adjust again the camera. So pardon this, a very lengthy lecture. If you're studying Hatha Yoga, this might serve you, this might help you, but you, know, you can just skip the video if. My words are, yeah. Okay. The Kachari Mudra is when we allow the tongue yeah, to roll and then enter the back of the nasal cavity. And while it's there, you know, something is happening, of course, there, you know, this, this will you know, lead you to many other skills aside from entering the back of the nasal cavity. The tongue being like the director. Yeah. When the tongue is behind and inside the uvula, behind the nasal cavity, the inner body will just open spontaneously. Like there's nothing there. Like the organs do not exist. The body is one empty vessel, is one empty hollow space. And the tongue can gain access to those deep pockets. Yeah. The Kachari Mudra is the Mudra of all Mudras. It's the Bandha of all Bandhas. It's the Asana of all Asana. It's one technique that accomplishes all. But then again, yeah, not everyone will have the calling. We have the circumstance. Yeah. Mindful breathing is the next closest thing we can gain access to the grace of God. Thank you for listening. Yeah, and yeah, I hope yeah, the information and the life experiences I share with you yeah, also help you in your spiritual journey. Have a lovely day. I'll see you in the next one. Namaste.